Hi, I'm Anthony Carlo here alongside Jersey Joe Archino for the Westchester Knicks Weekly Report. And Joe, what a game. A 99-98 win for the Westchester Knicks, who waited all game long to come back in the final 20 seconds of the contest. Now, the Vipers kept the Knicks down in the first half. What went wrong for them, and how did they turn it around? I think just overall, we really see the Knicks struggle coming out of the gate. They really have done a good job closing the game out in the third and fourth quarters. But I was talking to Ben Strong a little bit about this, and I think that's their number one priority, coming out of the gate with a little more energy, a little bit better execution. But in this game, it seemed like all the time they were getting close, they were cutting the lead down, and then the, the other team was just knocking down all their shots. It kind of That was the trend that we saw until that fourth quarter where they just had a ton of big energy plays and they were able to come away with the win. Now early on the Knicks seemed to be getting eaten up in the paint and that's something as you were mentioning to me before it's something you don't often see and then we look at the fact that the Vipers took 38 shots from behind the arc so the Vipers were trying to confuse this team from all over I think the Knicks were getting a little conscious that hey this team is hitting a lot of threes and then all of a sudden the Vipers started working themselves inside but at times, the Knicks also seemed a little lackadaisical, a little bit without the normal energy that they usually possess. What was that all about? I agree with you. I mean, it was definitely something very concerning because, as we say all the time, one of the big strengths of this Westchester Knicks team is their size. Jordan Vandenberg. Ben Strong, Darnell Jackson, a lot of good length on this team. And the fact that the Vipers were just getting in the paint so easily and scoring so easily was a little bit alarming. Now, especially with the second chance points, I mean, they get shot 38 times from the three-point range. That's definitely got to get cleaned up. They have the talent to correct this. The guys they have, they have size that a lot of other teams just can't counter. I think it's just a, a thing of watching the tape executing, practicing it, and I think it will get addressed and fixed. Now you mentioned with their size, you brought up Darnell Jackson, and Darnell, within those last 20 seconds of the fourth quarter, wound up scoring, and that was the big score of the game. That is what broke the tie. How big was it for Darnell to be able to step up in that moment? Obviously, look, he didn't have his career, a career game here, but sometimes the clutch play is what counts. You know, how important was it for him to be sort of the symbol of their digging down deep to come out with this win? I think it was huge. I mean, we were talking to Darnell after the game, and I think it kind of weighed on him a little bit. I mean, it wasn't the greatest game like we were just saying. They really got eaten up inside by the Vipers, but you know what? When they really needed that big play at the end, he was there to get it done, and I think at the end, that's all the team Matt really cares about. They're gamers, like Ben Strong was telling us, and I think they live on the moment when the game is on the line. This building did a great job of bringing the energy tonight. I think they fueled off the and ben, and you just look at them. Darnell Jackson just made the play, and I think whenever they need a big bucket at the end of the game, he's going to be a guy you can always rely on. We're all such gamers, you know, that when it gets yeah, that when it gets down to the point, and the crowd gets behind us. We just get so hyped. And so the Knicks move to 5-5 five and five on the year. They snap a two-game losing streak, and in the making, they also had six players in double digits. Now, Orlando Sanchez had 20 points on the night, and Andre Barrett, the team high, dropping 21 on the evening. They move forward tomorrow to take on Bakersfield. And, Joe, I want to ask you this question, because in a, in a game like this, I mean, the crowd, phenomenal. They were looking for this team to come back and win, and they did. But really, how much can you take from a game like this in which, like Coach Wheeler, it said they only really put together three solid minutes of play. I completely agree. I mean, this is a kind of game where you're just kind of lucky to get by. You made the plays at the end like you had to, but there are a lot of things you need to address. It's a quick turnaround, so you really need to just rest up. And tomorrow, I think it's execution. You've really got to work on. You have the size. You have a ton of intangibles. It's just working on the execution of the offense, rebounding on the ins inside. I think there are things that will be corrected, but again, there's still a lot of young pieces on this team. They're still learning a lot of things. I think this is a good learning experience for a lot of those guys, and they will continue to clean it up as we move forward. Well, the Knicks will try to get over that 500 bump and move on to their sixth win tomorrow. For Jersey Joe Archino, I'm Anthony Carlo for your Westchester Knicks Weekly Report.